Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and Samsung's One UI 3.0 Beta just rolled out to the S20 series. So I pulled the trigger and got my S20 Ultra updated. One UI 3.0 is built on Android 11 and hence it brings with it some substantial changes. Now these are features most Samsung users will be running into in the weeks and months to come. So in this video, let's take a close look at what these new features are and believe me, some of them are really cool. So first, let's start with the home screen. When you wanted to add a widget with older One UI versions, you had to dig into the widget menu and search for it. Now it is much easier. The revamped contextual menu has a widget option. So long press the app icon and add the widget you want. Sweet, right? Well, on the topic of widgets, the lock screen widgets have more options now. Basically, digital well-being, that's the one new option. Always on also gets a few new options, including GIFs. So that is another pretty cool addition. Well, on the topic of lock screen, the dynamic lock screen option, one that allows us to have wallpapers auto change, it now offers more categories. So you can get to be more nitpicky about what category of pictures you want as wallpapers on your phone. And when you are seeing a nice wallpaper here, you can double tap to turn the screen off. Now, this is something other brands have been doing for a long, long time. So it's not a new feature or anything, at least. I mean, to Samsung, it is a new feature, but other brands, they've been using it for a long time. And hey, we also have third-party apps that get this functionality onto any phone. But a brand's first-party integration, it being integrated directly into the user interface, that's always, a, that's always a nice sight to see. So settings, advanced features, motions and gestures, done. With the lock screen, there is another change. The time and day, date, placement, that's changed. They've moved it to a more center location. They've made the time larger, the date and day smaller. You can change it back if you want to. This is just the default option that's been changed. And this change is also present with the quick settings panel. Now, there are a couple of changes here that I'm not a fan of. So it's not all smooth sailing. The first one is search phone settings and the three dots, they've gone up again. Now this affects the ease of single-handed usage, which Samsung says is a huge focus of One UI. So it kind of defeats the purpose, right? Second, we only get 12 toggles per page instead of 16. And the reason being devices and media now take up an entire row instead of being subtext. Well, the one hand focus might have slipped a tad here. Samsung has kept that in mind with the volume controls. With earlier versions of One UI, when we press the volume key, the volume displayed high up and required the use of both hands or some finger gymnastics to actually hit it and control. Now the volume display, it's moved to the right side, right next to the volume keys themselves. So this is a much more elegant placement, a much more elegant solution. We can also put the phone on silent from here. The volume submenu is also easier to use single-handed. By the way, note that live captions is also present right on the screen. Other Android 11 features like media, the media player's revamped look on the notification bar and the conversation tabs, they're also pre present and accounted for. And of course, chat bubble is also available. It is a huge Android 11 feature after all. But now let's, you know, talking about bubbles, actually circle back to the quick toggles themselves. See what I did. A little bit of wordplay. Connie, yes, I'll see myself out. But then again, if you do like this kind of stuff, if you like what it is that I'm trying differently, thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications by hitting the bell icon. Now, some of the quick toggles, they've received a makeover. The power mode, it's now called the power saving mode, the quick toggle. The maximum power saving mode is still present. It works much faster. See how fast it gets into it? Now, yes, these are two different phones, but they both do sport the Exynos 990 chip. So the difference here, just from a hardware perspective, should not be this much. Again, as you can see, getting out of the mode so much faster. By the way, if you're worried that Samsung has done away with the high performance mode, no, it's just a quick toggle by itself and it is called enhanced processing. So if you're someone who swaps between these modes quite, quite often, this should be way more convenient for you. Now the notification shade, instead of darkening the background when you pull it down, it kind of sort of adds a Gaussian blur to the back. I personally like the Gaussian blur look, and I'm sure those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that, seeing all my thumbnails and all that. This look is kept uniform by Samsung. The same thing happens when you open up a folder or even get into the recents menu. This recents menu, it now feels a little bit more 3D-esque, if I can say that. Uh, the center pane is larger than the other panes and the panes from the side, they appear to flow in and flow out. So it's got a kind of uh, carousel look going for it. The animations are also much smoother. 
Next, let's move on to the settings menu. The email ID and the profile icon are larger. I absolutely do not like this. It forces me to have to track and blur out my email ID. Again, a lot more work, so I don't like it. But from a user perspective, it's nice. The classification, the grouping, that's also changed. So things are a little better sorted and they look fresh. The icon themselves for each submenu, they resemble the icons from the, ho from the home screen. So this adds a sense of coherence, uniformity to the entire interface. Now, some of the submenus have also gotten changes. Under notifications, we have a change in how things are displayed. We have a detailed option and then a brief option. This has a brief pop-up setting, which lets us tinker around with the edge lighting options. There are new ones here as well, like this is something new, it looks cool. Now, the first party apps, they've also gotten makeovers. Now, do note that some of these require app updates after being up, after the phone gets updated to One, one UI 3.0. The Samsung browser, it is now at version 13.0. Uh, it's called Samsung Internet, of course, not Samsung browser. Any which ways, it packs a few new cool features too. We can lock and rearrange tabs. This is small thumbnail to the side. You can choose from different ways the thumbnail, uh, the tabs are displayed. One of my favorite features here with Samsung Internet 13.0, it does not let apps or it does not let websites hijack the back key. Now, if you are, say, looking for a certain torrent or something, there are a lot of times these pop-up ads that come up and they kind of hijack the back key. Samsung internet is not supposed to let that happen. Now, I don't use this browser a lot, but hey, it's a nice feature to see any brand incorporate, right? With contacts, we can edit multiple link contacts at once, delete duplicate contacts easily. This I really loved. I don't know why it's taken Samsung so long. The trash bin storage, it's been extended from 15 to 30 days. And the big one, the call screen can now be customized. So first, we get to change the layout. I like the larger name and display image. Next, the call background itself. We can change that. We can even set a video for it. And we can set our own audio with it. Set that sound as the ringtone. And as you can see, you can trim the video right from here. If you like Harris's video here, let him know. Hit thumbs up. Now the Messages app also gets a trash option, a recycled bin. Uh, with digital well-being, we have added trends to the weekly report. We can see how our usage patterns have changed. There's a phone usage while driving stat too. Now digital well-being is all about cutting down screen time, how long we spend with the phone, and having to turn the phone on the display on and navigate to digital well-being to check our screen time. It's quite counterproductive, right? And that's what we get to avoid with the digital well-being widget that we saw earlier. Now with camera, there's supposed to be improved autofocus and exposure functionality. The stabilization while taking high zoom pictures is also supposed to have been improved. I didn't really get to test this out because I couldn't do an A-B testing because I didn't have two uh, S20 Ultras, but theoretically it's supposed to improve. The exposure and focus lock, it gets a small lock icon to the top and the exposure adjustment now moves along with the lock for easier single-handed usage. The photo editor, it gets the ability to revert edited pictures to the original version even after you save, which at times can be a lifesaver. Now there is one Android 11 feature that I was really looking forward to, but sadly Samsung's not included. Android 11 offers a nifty little device control option under its revamped power menu. Sadly, it's not here on One UI 3.0. Barring these, the animations are more fluid overall and Samsung also claims there should be a performance boost with On UI 3.0. And oh yeah, Bixby gets a new... Who cares what Bixby gets? I mean, does anybody even use Bixby? So that's pretty much it for all the new One UI 3.0 features. What do you guys think of the features listed here? Do you feel Samsung's done a great job with One UI 3.0? Or do you feel maybe Samsung missed a trick somewhere? And by the way, did I miss out on any of your favorite features? If yes, don't really bitch about it in the comments. Just leave me, let me know. Nice little comment saying, hey, Ash, you missed this out. And I'll probably try to do a part two. There's a lot of features I missed out. I really don't think I missed out on a lot, but hey, you guys let me know. And I guess that's pretty much it. So let me know what you thought about this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if you have uh, any constructive criticism, any feedback, you know, jokes apart, if Constructive criticism is always welcome. Please feel free to tell me uh, whatever you think about the video, any kind of feedback you might have had. Uh, and also subscribe if you haven't yet. Turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.